single hand or any overhead casting or the single hand especially that everybody does it's a one plane cast if my hand simulates a plane it's a one plane cast Skagit casting or all space types of casts are three-dimensional casts here's this plane of your sweep and then the plane of your forward cast which means you have to connect the two the ball and the rod tip will give you a visual on the difference here, how uh, semi-circular this motion is, this is what we call the sweep, the loading portion, and then the forward cast. It's all one big circular motion here. The, what the wiffle ball is doing here is it's not, not going to show you the exact path of the fly line. What it's going to show you is what I'm thinking of doing with my rod in order to get an out and around motion during the sweep. I am thinking of when I do the sweep, I'm thinking of trying to get things to go out and around in a very semicircular motion, but also with an outward force traveling away from me on the line. This is what I'm thinking of. So the Wiffle Golf Ball shows what we're trying to achieve here as far as the mechanical action goes. I'm trying to swing the ball out and around, okay? I'm trying to swing it out and around. You can see this plane here sweeping around and then this plane here going in the forward casting stroke. That's two distinctly different planes and they're hooked together by this motion right here. So that's a semicircular motion here and then another semicircular motion to get the two planes connected together. And that's uh, what I wanted to show you with this wiffle golf ball because it's very visual is that that's one of the things, uh, concepts I should say, that if you've been single hand, if you've only been single hand overhead casting, that's one of the concepts you need to, to be aware of is that once again, single hand overhead casting, straight back and forth, and also only one plane. Skagit casting, very semicircular, and two planes. Here's the one plane, here's the other plane, like this. Separating the two is what I mean is super important because if you get here and try to cast like this, in other words, your sweep is here and then your forward cast is in the same plane, you're going to find that the D loop will not come out of the water. In fact, and that's a good little actually tip to note, is if you're having trouble getting your line out of the water on the forward cast, or like let's say you're fishing a small fly and then all of a sudden you switch to a big fly, and you're having trouble getting it out of the water in the forecast. What you need to do then, or I'm not saying what you need to do, what I suggest you try is more separation from your sweep to your forward stroke. In other words, if you're coming around on your sweep here and your forward stroke is only slightly more vertical, go more vertical, more vertical. I find that exaggerating has helped me in a lot of my different casts, thinking of exaggerating certain movements. And one of those movements for me is like, if I'm doing the sweep here, and once again, I need to get more vertical, that's called separating the planes. The more vertical you get, it seems like the tighter your loop gets to the point where I actually think of trying to cant the rod towards my head on the way forward. And when I do that, boy, that's the optimum performance class. You get super tight loops. So that separation of the two planes from this one to this one, super important in Skagit casting, all right? Playing the sweep, playing the forward casting stroke. The other thing that this Wiffle Golf Ball is going to show you is the speed of the Skagit casting process. It's not a slow start and then accelerate in like that. It's literally an immediate or sudden start and then just maintain a steady pace, just enough speed to keep the rod or the feel of load on the rod. Literally, it's immediate start and then maintain speed, steady speed throughout. Immediate start and then steady speed throughout. Once again, it's not slow and then accelerate into it like that. That's totally counterproductive. And uh, once again, the Wiffle Golf Ball kind of gives you the, the visual for it is then an immediate start and then just maintain steady speed throughout the motion. And now, <laughs>
now for a commercial break. <laughs> the way that I cast gadget cast, I, you, you know, if, if you listen to anything I've said over the years, I'm always harping on constant motion, uh, constant motion, constant load, and that's achieved by this like semicircular motion here. Once I start this immediate start, if this was uh, you know an actual fly line of water, the one thing I can't show with a wiffle ball is actual load on the rod. But you'd see the rod bend. Then you'd see it maintain the bend, in other words, all the way around. And you'll feel it here when you're casting on the water. You'll feel once you start that and you keep the load on all the way around. And this can only be done with this semicircular motion like this. And you can see it, the golf ball, or the, it comes around. Once I start, the golf ball comes around in a very smooth and consistent flight path all the way around. Now in the other, uh, with the linear motion, you end up with a very herky-jerky, I don't know if you can see it, it's probably bouncing back there, and it's bouncing out front here. This is why we do this semicircular motion. You can see how much smoother the, f the flight of the, the ball is if we maintain a nice semicircular motion here and eliminate this back stop, forward stop, back stop, forward stop motion. Here's a little tip if you've been doing uh, Skagit type of casting for a while because it it's, might be a little bit much for a beginner to learn. But uh, on the out and around, one of the most important parts, you're going to get some you know, good casts if you do this, kind of like what I'm showing here, which is standard, which is basically you're starting your out and around down here to the, slightly off to the side. After you've been casting a while, getting that so that it travels away from you first and then coming around. Away from you first and then coming around. See how that ball goes away and then comes around. Like I said, this is probably more of a little advanced move, but it's one of those little tricks that when you add it together with a couple of other little tricks which I'll show you, is going to improve your casting a whole bunch. Like I said, if you can get this just enough little motion out to get that ball to travel away from you first. And uh, once again, this will have to be hooked up with, you'll have to connect this visual with some of the stuff that we do on the water. But you're going to hear me preaching that when you do your set, which is we pick up the line, then we set it back down on the water, that whenever possible, we want to try to lay the fly line in close inside a rod length. And I'm going to show you what, what that is. Most of the time, you know, when I'm casting, I'm just kind of relaxed and doing whatever. And I'm not concentrating so much on this thing here because it casts well. But if I was fighting wind, throwing a big fly, something that was a little bit out of normal, then I'm going to try to lay that line in a little closer. So now I get more of an outward, the, the rod tip actually travels outside the path of where the line is laying in the water and you're pulling away, which seems to give better final casting results. Right there, now I can see how the line, now when I come around, the rod tip is actually traveling outside where the line is laying. And you get a better tensioning or load or whatever you want to call it on the sweep. If the golf ball is the line, and the line lands way out there, it's impossible to get an out. You can only come around starting there, that's it. You can only get an outward motion starting there. However, if the fly line gets laid in here, now watch what happens. See that? Now I can force the fly line away from me first and then around, and that little move produces a definite noticeable improvement in your casting. And I'm not exactly sure why. You'll have to talk to physics. It's just something to do with better tension on the line, I guess. So. Okay.